in 2008, we had a project where we won the competition for the headquarters for Spiegel in Hamburg. And this project had a whole new set of criteria that I had never come across before. And we had to do a complete material screening of the building, looking specifically for ways to reduce allergy. And that was not just materials, but also very specifically in our, our designs for the office space. And then we also had to do a screening for no halogen containing products. And I remember looking at this and thinking, what's a halogen and why don't we want it in the building? And quickly trying to look it up so I could catch up and be on up to speed with our consultants who were actually the engineers, uh, DNS from Germany, who are running the certification side of the project and assumed that we knew what halogens were. So. I mean, more, relatively recently, in part, the impact of the lab. Uh, we've been obviously pursuing uh, doing projects that are uh, as full with daylight as they can be, negotiating the relationship of energy, uh, daylight, particularly a project on, uh, for Cornell University for the College of Engineering, where we're working very closely with engineers to try to match the relationship between the energy conservation and the daylight over the window to wall ratio. And it's only more, been more recently in the last year and a half where, given the opportunity to work on a project for the Helen Walton Children's Enrichment Center in Benville, where the client, in, even in early discussions, said she wasn't really interested, as interested in the energy portion, but she was really interested in was the children's health. And there was a rough framework in place, uh, but it dovetailed into the work that was ongoing here and uh, seeing if there was an opportunity to be able to dovetail those together given the importance of uh, the interior environment uh, and materials for the impact upon six-week-old kids all the way up to five-year-old. And so that's, that's where the office's interest has come in, very much through a very specific project and an opportunity set forth by the lab. The design philosophy of, of the office, uh, Lewis or Marky Lewis, is has been always interested in doing projects for, that are for the public with an, an interest in what we refer to as intensifying social relationships. Uh, in part, this is understanding the relationship of how space establishes and creates a ca capacity for individuals to interact, uh, particularly at a time frame in which digital technology is displacing the interpersonal relationship or augmenting it, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, the, the challenge then is if you're looking at the quality of the interior environment, how does this then play out in terms of the, to the, the actual materials that are being uh, put into the buildings that inf influence that? And just gaining a knowledge through the lab and understanding the impact, the longer term impact upon the material choices has made that a kind of not only obvious point, but something that is an area that we're really, really keenly interested in pursuing, not simply on projects for uh, early childhood education, but also other projects, uh, given the impact upon health. Yeah, well, we have a very different firm, a uh, much larger firm, and uh, we have a single founder. Uh, Sixty years ago, Henning Larson founded the office and established, uh, through his his forty year work with the office, a very intense relationship with uh, daylight and how daylight is in his spaces, uh, how he uses daylight to develop his spaces, and how daylight uh, can be a positive source for inspiration for the people in his spaces. So the design philosophy of Henning Larson today is developing architecture with people in focus, which is perhaps the more colloquial way of mm -hmm. expressing exactly mm -hmm. what you have said <laughs> for LTL, uh, that we are uh, looking at uh, the spaces with the with person in mind, with the human being in mind. And that is not just a question of daylight, but also a question of uh, acoustic relationship and the indoor air quality and the sense of happiness when you look at, at the space. Does it, is, it a, is it a space that makes you feel good? Uh, that's all about the human body and, and the human mind. 
architecture for people who are in it. Henning Larson has uh, been working with sustainability and architecture now for many years. We established a very strong working relationship with uh, PhD business students who were working in our office and working on their PhDs. And this was a, a critical shift for the office because it became much more knowledge oriented. And in this shift to knowledge-based design, we began to tackle very specifically these questions of what can we glean from research to influence our, our architecture positively? How can we work hand in hand with these engineers who are now embedded in our office? And how can we utilize their knowledge to imbue our own design processes? This was a real takeoff point because it was also the moment where we the architecture, our, our architecture office began to really address the issues of sustainability is not just a question about energy use. And in addressing that, you bring up all of these much more human-oriented issues such as daylight and materials. And this becomes the focus, and these issues are really relevant for the way you develop your architecture. In our knowledge-based design with materials, we're working very specifically with what can we learn from the contents of materials? What is it in the materials that we want to avoid? How can we turn this whole discussion of materials and, and architecture so that it's not just a negative discussion and it's not just don't use this and don't use that and you better avoid that and this is a no-go and uh, but we try and turn it around and say, listen, we have to profile these, these positive materials and have to find ways of, of uh, supporting the manufacturers who are, are producing materials that have less health hazards and are better for the indoor air climate.